It's Mental Fox here with another episode of my playthrough of Skyrim. Thank you so much for joining me again. We're in Calixto's House of Curiosities. Hopefully you saw the last episode. And you saw that it was Calixto all along who was the necromancer killing poor innocent women here in Windhelm. We killed him. We, we kind of caught him in the act, but not really. He killed somebody literally right behind us. Then we went on a wild goose chase. And um, then we went and talked to Yorleaf, and that quest is done. But now we've come here to his house, and uh, I found his journal here. I don't know if anything's going to happen if we bring this back to Yorleaf, because like I said, that quest is done. Um, who's this? Farm work is hard work. Uh -huh. It's good to relax when I can. But I still have to listen to my brothers harping about injustice. Yeah. Uh, it is now freaking 11.40 p.m. Let's go right over here to Candle Hearth Hall. Uh, I'm going to get a room for the night. And then in the morning, we're going to go back to your leaf. <laughs> because like I said in the last episode, I thought I was going to get a freaking place to live here in town. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Mm -hmm. Seeing I'll a show good you to your room. Bro, right might this be way. Just the thing. I still can't believe Isabella's gone. She was such a helpful young lass. I made my fortune as a sea captain, but now I'm retired. I made my fortune as a sea captain. Okay. Oops, that's not the room. The townsfolk call me captain because I used to be a sailor. Okay, we are going to go ahead and sleep, get a good eight hours of rest, because golly gee. We need it, uh, even though our curse of the werewolf prevents us from getting a good night's sleep. It's an interesting um, side effect. Oh, Elisa came in the room with us. Interesting side effect of being a werewolf. I didn't know that werewolves didn't get good nights of rest. But apparently they don't. Okay. I still can't believe Isabella's gone. Let's, I don't know, let's go see Yorleaf again. I mean, I have the key to hear him. Gods watch over your battles, friend. Um, can I just um, make it my home regardless? Uh, what huh, I just heard somebody say, by the gods, this can't be happening. She I probably found this body over here that nope. Sorry. people are finding one at a time that nobody ever bothers to clean up. Sad as it is. All right, your leaf. I'm coming for you one more time. Aldred won't give us a straight answer. He's a true Nord. He'll come around. Don't be so sure. If you have nope. any news of the Western Holds, okay. take it to Ulfric immediately. The Speak with Galmar. He'll size you up and see where run. we can best. And what would you have me do? All right. Well, that's the end of that. Um. Hmm, that's kind of disappointing. I'm going to go up here to Woundforth again. Something I didn't think to do when we were up here before is maybe I could sell him some stuff. Let's see if I have any items to sell. What? If Ulfric needs a favor, he has. So, you wish to master the arcane arts? Let's see. Uh, I don't really have anything heavy to sell to him, unfortunately. I could sell him these scrolls. I'm not going to use these. I, don't, I wonder why these are red. Yeah, we'll just sell him those. Uh, this necromancer's amulet. Uh, he doesn't have enough gold. Let's see. Is there anything we could buy from him? Uh, he has some greater soul gems. A grand, he has three grand soul gems, but they're empty. Here we go. Here's one that's full. He has three of them that are full. Let's buy one of those from him, and then we will sell him this Necromancer's Amulet. So I'm not going to wear that. Uh, Ring of Mul Minor Alteration, we'll also sell him that. And um, that might be it, really. We're going to sell to him. I want to keep the other stuff. But it's good to know that he has some grand soul gems, in case I ever want to buy them. So, I mean, increases the damage 
and decrease the cost of destruction spells for 120 seconds. If I could ever remember to use, the, use this, that would be nice for me to use. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's uh, move on, I guess. Strength and steel are well and good, but... Excuse me. Huh? The true power in this world. So, what are we going to do now? Well, I still don't... I need to sell some stuff, I guess. I think I'm still over-encumbered. Or close to it. Pretty close to it. Um, I mean, what... What do I have that I want to get rid of? Let me look at my weight of everything. An iron sword of frost. A hunting bow of draining. For a dragon to attack Kynescroft. Why? Why there? There's no place safe. What is it? Dragons? So, here's Hiram, sight of horrible murders and blood on the f ground. I mean, do I want this to be my home? <laughs> I love the music. Well, I don't know, man. This would be an awesome place to have, though. It's freaking huge. The bed is not owned. So I could just move in here, but uh, unfortunately I have no way to clean it up. I don't know, man. We are going to uh, walk over here to the market real quick. What's going on over here? What are you doing? Just saying a prayer? What's up, Helgard? My job's simple enough. The dead don't really complain much. Yeah. Luckily, Windhelm is cold, so <laughs> the dead don't rot as quickly. Sometimes the burial has to wait for the ground to thaw, though. Yeah, I bet. Alright, we're gonna do a quick sale of some items here. Everyone says your hmm, blades, helmets, pretty much anything to suit your needs. I'm gonna sell him the iron sword of frost. Crap, he doesn't have any money left though. I wanted to sell him this. He's only got 125. Does he have anything that I want to buy from him? I don't think he does really. Um, I mean, I could buy some moonstone or maybe I don't know, maybe. And now. He should have enough to buy this hunting bow of draining. Okay. All right, well, we sold some things off. Um, everything else, I guess I'll just hang on to. Whether it's armor you need or a new blade, come see me. Okay. What is it, dragon? Let's get out of here. What we're gonna do now is, since it's kind of in the neighborhood, uh, we are going to bring the Forge Master's fingers over to uh, Maholuk over at Narzalbor. Nils is awfully concerned about the little logs. Oh, I love this storm out here. Such great weather effects. Oh, Frida is certainly grating, but she pays well. Thankfully, nobody from the city can see me out here. Huh, who's Bullfrida? I don't know who Bullfrida is. This is so cool. Uh, I've been able to level up for quite a while now, and I've just been ignoring it. Uh, Magicka, health, or stamina? Uh, man, I really, really want my Magicka to do a lot of damage. I'm going to put it into Magicka. Okay, I have five freaking perks to increase. Uh, once I get destruction up to 60, uh, I'll be able to do something else here, I believe. Um, what that thing is, I'm not sure. 
maybe um, something like uh, expert destruction but I'm not really casting any expert level destruction spells I suppose I could put um, maybe I could do this now nope I can't uh, yeah, once we get up to 60, I can put another point into uh, Augmented Flames. And my Fire Spells will do 50% more damage since I seem to do so much with Fire Spells. Oh, this thing, yeah. Fire damage causes targets to flee if their health is low. See, I just don't know if I want this because if their health is low, I want them to stick around so I kid can kill them. I don't want them to run away. So, I don't know, man. We've got Expert Destruction requires 75, and up here, Master Destruction. All right, let's go to Narzable. Narzable. Get there. I'm just going to walk in this direction. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this quest that I'm doing right now. I mean, the orcs aren't necessarily my enemy. And, um, you know, they didn't attack me when I approached their camp, so if they're willing to talk, I'm willing to work with them. I don't, I don't think I'm doing anything evil here against my character's character. I don't think so. Pines Grove. Braidwood Inn. I don't know if I've ever really gone in there. I don't know, man. Uh, oh, Narlable's that way? Really? Where the hell am I? Well, I'm way down here. Don't think you can barter with me like one of those damned shopkeepers. Okay. Good to know, buddy. The things that gets people riled up, man. He gets so insulted. Oh, you think you could barter with me? I'm not a shopkeeper. He's just so insulted. How the heck do I get to Narzalpur? I've been there before. Gotta figure out how to get around these rocks. Maybe we'll get to go into the camp and see what an orc camp looks like. That's going to be neat. Well, there's no snow here, which is interesting. I think it is. Oh, crap, man. Okay, this should be before the mountains. There it is. So, we came here before and we asked if we could come in. And they're like, nope, can't come in. And I was like, well, what can I do? to gain passage into this place. And uh, somebody named Yatul told us that um, if we got these uh, Forge Master's fingers and brought them to her chief, then maybe we could even be blood kin with the orcs. I think it'd be hilarious to be blood kin of the orcs at the same time that I'm a werewolf. I don't know why I think that's funny. Maybe it's not. I'm not gonna steal their arrows. It's not a good way to get started here. Right away. I'm on it, man. Yeah, look at this. You have returned with the gauntlets. Enter. Speak to our chief right away. Okay. I will do exactly that. Speak to the chief. So I'm kind of excited to check this place out and see what the, uh, I don't know, architecture is like. I mean, that's a cool looking building right there. 
mean, what kind of buildings do orcs build? Well, they build little huts. Ooh, neat. They have uh, alchemy labs that look just like alchemy labs everywhere else. Who's this person? This stronghold is for the orcs. Oh. Leave now. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I guess we'll go talk to the uh, the manager. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to go speak with the manager about this place. Hello, Chief Mahaluk. I have something for you, and I think you're going to like it. I don't believe it. You found the Forge Master's fingers. Yep. You've impressed me, Outlander. No one else has returned from this task before. By the Code of Malakath, I name you Bloodkin to the Orcs. Let it be known among the strongholds that you are family now. Wow. I am truly honored. Feel free to trade with our smiths for orc weapons and armor. Train with my warriors, or purchase poisons from the wise woman. Welcome to our stronghold, Bloodkin. Wow, I feel so welcomed. Cool. Let's talk to him a little bit. Maybe he has a job for us. Come to purchase ebony. Our gloom-bound mine runs thick with black veins. Hmm. Um, now I just wanted to ask you some questions. Uh, how do the orcs govern themselves? The Code of Malakath. It is both tradition and law in the strongholds. Break the code, and you must pay blood price. The code is not written anywhere. It is known and carried on by the orcs, and all who live in the strongholds follow it. For an outlander, following it is simple. Do not steal or attack anyone in the stronghold, or be ready to pay in gold or blood. Fair enough. So you're the chief here, huh? Yes. I earned the right by slaying my father in single combat. One day, I will have a son who will challenge me when I become too old to lead, and the stronghold will have a new chief. Until then, I alone have the right to have wives and children. Hmm. It ensures our strength. Interesting. Anyway, is there any work to be done in the stronghold? How about a test? Oh. Your muscle against mine. The victor gains 100 gold coins from the loser. Yeah. <sighs> Not really my idea of fun, but uh, let's do it. This will be good training. Let's go. Let's go. Come let's on. start the punching. Oh, I don't want to accidentally punch somebody else. Uh, we're not doing as much. Yeah, I guess we're getting some... Some more done. So... Every time I fight, I think there's probably quite a bit more finesse to this than what I'm doing. I'm just mashing a button. But thus far, just mashing the button has always worked for me. Um, and I'm too lazy to try to figure out, you know, uh, strong attacks and blocks and all that crap. So basically, I just press the button while aiming at the uh, my opponent. And I watch their um, red bar at the top go down, and I make sure it's going down quicker than the, my red bar at the bottom of the screen. That's pretty much it, but I will tell you right now, my uh, clicking finger is getting a little tired. But we've almost got him. You're talking to yourself? Anybody, anybody's a puny weakling, it's you. There. There. Do I get to be chief now? Huh? Do I get to be chief now? You bested me, an orc chief. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Yeah, well, I think I've earned my coin, and I think I earned the, <laughs> the right to be chief. <laughs> that you have. Here. Oh. Okay, well, there you go. Boy, it was nice brawling with you, Not. Let's see what he has to say now. May your next fight bring you victory, friend. Yeah, we're friends now. Come to purchase ebony. Well, Our gloom-bound mine runs thick with black bane. What's this place? Uh, let's go into his longhouse. Why not? I don't know. Let's do a little bit of looking around. Now, we're not going to steal anything. That would be bad. That would be breaking the code. But I wanted to see what it looks like in here. Pretty cool. Kind of like it. What do you think, Adelaisa? Pretty neat, huh? Got a nice bedroom here. We got some books here. Ooh, we got some interesting books. We've got The True Nature of Orcs, The Knights of the Nine, and The Code of Malakath. And, um, this is probably his bathroom. <laughs> he has an ensuite bathroom. We've got a chest here. Nice bed. Oh, we could sleep in that bed if we wanted to. It's not an owned bed. Uh, oh, apparently, um, these guys like uh, sweets, and apparently I'm allowed to help myself to uh, that coin purse if we want to, but I'm not going to do that. 
Gets a uh, purple mountain flower here. That's kind of nice. What do we got over here? Apples. A couple of books here. Got a nice fire going. I guess the smoke just goes up and out of the top of the ceiling there. And then we've got uh, beds for his no doubt wives here. We could sleep in these too if we really wanted to. He might get the wrong idea if we do that though. And uh, let's see who this is. Hello, how are you? Who are you? Mahulak. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a leader, but spends too much time moping over women. Bolar and I should be all he needs. Oh yeah. Orc chiefs should be strong and stand alone. They need no companions. Progeny is a poor excuse. Hmm. Okay. Seem a little bitter about that. I know I sound abrasive. <laughs> just that I love Malhulak so much I want us to be happy together. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yes. Okay, well, it was really nice talking to you. I was kind of hoping I could get to know you a little bit more, but uh, yes. that's okay. Okay, bye. Yeah. Let's uh, let's explore this place a little bit. Let's check it out. Uh, hello. How are you? My brother keeps trying to spin these fantasies to me about my aunts and our father. He's crazy. Who's your brother? Is your brother Urag? Yatul's been teaching me to hunt. I'm still learning, but she's the best teacher I could have. Sometimes I wonder if my aunts are right about my father. He does seem weak. Huh. Hmm. What now? Nothing. That's it. That's all we have to talk about. We've got a little goat pen here. Oh, here's a little house here. Uh, hmm. Well, I'm not going to go unlocking that door. I don't want to go causing trouble. You know, we're still new here. See what else there is to see. Here we've got well, another locked hut. Is this the whole place? Oh, neat. Okay, we're gonna go over there in a second. <laughs> Look at this. Are you gonna be mean to me now? I've read the entrails many times, but can't fathom why Mahulak's wives keep finding tragedy. Interesting. Hey, why don't you tell me a little bit more about your people? We have lived in Skyrim since before the Nords came. Our way is simple. All work to make the tribe strong. Only the bravest are allowed to lead and to marry. A great chief is able to attract many wives and raise bold children. Wise women like myself are mothers of chieftains. We guide the tribe and advise our kin on what is most pleasing to Malakath. Um, who's Malakath? He is our creator and master. The Daedric Lord of the Sworn Oath and the Bloody Curse. Malakath teaches us to honor all words with action. To demand blood from your enemies and strength from your allies. He watches over all orcs as his children. A truth those who leave the stronghold are quick to forget. Hmm, okay. Well, you got anything cool for sale? Take a look. Hmm. Well, let's see here. She's got potions. Interesting selection of potions here. Got some food. Some ingredients. A uh, couple of books, recipes. And that's it. That's all she's got. She doesn't have a lot of gold. And, um... I mean, she, well, she'd buy some stuff from us. Not a lot. But some things. Uh, not, there's nothing here that I think I want to sell to her, though. So we'll be on our way. Until next time. Until next time. It was really nice talking to you, Bolar. Let's go over this cool bridge, man. Look at this. This is neat. It's not that far down, but I still wouldn't want to fall. We've got a smelter here. This must be Gloom Whatever Mine, he's called it. So this would be stealing. I can't help myself to the ebony stuff, unfortunately. Hello. How are you, Dushnamoob? Are you looking to work? The mines are nearby. You bring me ore. I'll give you coin. Well, maybe I'll just keep the ore to myself. Hey, man, uh, your weapons and armor are impressive. It is said that an orc first learns to wield a hammer in his mother's womb. By tradition, a mother always teaches her children how to smith. If a chief has a second wife, she is called 
the Forge Wife, in honor of this. Interesting. Um, what have you got for sale? Hmm, blades, helmets, pretty much anything to suit your needs. All right, I'll be the judge of that. Uh, yeah, here's some blades. Uh, let's see here. Um, this Orcish Warhammer does 51 damage. And the uh, weapon I'm using also does 51 damage. So I don't think I'm interested in buying anything from him. Uh, but it's cool that it's here. Um, I can't improve this anyway because I don't have um, the orc skills. If he had an orc greatsword, I might be interested. Um, but uh, lately I've been using a warhammer and it's all good. And then armor got some... Well, I, not, he's got dwarven armor, which is interesting. Is there no such thing as orcish armor? Because he doesn't have any. Fight well. Thanks, you too. I, I think. Ooh, here's a. Oh, this is just regular old stone. Could bind that forever, right? And then, as far as the actual mine itself, Gloombound Mine has been mine has been discovered. Uh, or a calcum. <laughs> I don't have a pickaxe. Remember I gave it up a while back? Uh, <laughs> you'd think there'd be a pickaxe lying around here. Oh, look how cool she looks with this uh, glass uh, battle axe on her back. That's cool, man. Uh, let's see if there's a pickaxe lying around. And if there is, uh, can I take it? Yes, pickaxe. Nice. <laughs> Interesting, though. This pickaxe that I just picked up. Okay, it weighs 10. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say the other pickaxe I had all had weighed, weighed 10. Now, the other one I had modified to superior, but I don't think that made any difference in how long it takes me to mine something. I mean, I thought it would, and maybe it did, and I just didn't notice it, but uh, I don't think it did. That seems like it takes the same number of swings. That's pretty awesome that I could just find myself a pickaxe. So, uh, this is the mine. Huh, interesting. A little cart here. Okay, we got a little place to sleep. Heavy armor forging. Pretty sure I've already read that. Oh, I got a Was that you, Annalisa? <laughs> Did you yawn? What was that? Uh, I got some baked potatoes here. Let's go into the mine. Let's check it out. Why not? We're here. Let's see what's up. That's pretty cool. We got some food here. Another pickaxe. Coin purse. Oh, here's some uh, iron. What are you mining? Iron? Hey, what's up, Mogders? I'm here to mine, Outlander. So unless you want to dig, get out. Gosh, just wanted to say hi. Malakath has given me the task to mine. Good ore brings strength to our people. She's an elf, right? I'm here to mine, All Outlander. Right. So unless you want to dig, get out. <laughs> get out. Ooh, let's get some ebony ore. I'm gonna want that for something, I guess. I imagine that's what we use to improve orcish armor items. And I, and I think I'm interested in that. I think that's like the next level up of armor from what I'm using now. Here's more ebony. Let's get it. Oh. Okay, there we go. I thought I was doing that thing where I would just go forever. Wow, there's um, actually quite a bit of this stuff in here. Let's collect a bit of it. I'm not going to sell it to the guy out here. I'm going to keep it. I don't need it right now, but I may at some point. Look look behind me over there. What's going on over there? It's like all hot over there or something? Look at this. Iron. Man, I... Kind of afraid to mine in here. What if there's a spark? 
You know? Seems like we'll blow up. Doesn't seem to matter, does it? Garnet sitting there, so we just left a garnet sitting there. Let's get all the ebony we can. How much ebony have I gotten? Fifteen. Fifteen ebony ores. Hey guys, how's it going? What's up, Gadba Grow Lar Largash? Mool is the smart one. I go where he tells me. Here's Mool. Gadba and me came to work the mine. The plan is to get rich and then go back to Lagerspur and take over. Take over, huh? Mining is tough, but Mool says the money is good. So we mine. We? Looks like you're just standing there, dude. Mahulak brought us in when he found ebony in the mine. Not enough men in town to work it. So here we are. Oh, okay. You when guess... we go back oh. to Lagersburg, we'll be kings. I like Narzalbur, but don't tell Mool. I won't, man. Hey, Mool, did you hear what he just said? One of these days, we need to head back to the rift. Get some of that good rift in mead. It's good stuff, right? Yes. This is iron. Ebony, yeah. Let's get some of this. Might as well stock up on it while I'm here. Uh, unfortunately, as far as I know, I still don't have a permanent place in uh, Windhelm. I mean, I guess I could go into Hiram or whatever that what now? place is called and just store the stuff in there and hope that it doesn't go away. But it looks like there's a lot of ebony ore in here. And I wonder how fast it replenishes. Like, how many days have to go by before I could come back and get more. Because who knows? Maybe I'll need more in the future. Um, crap. Yeah, it's doing that thing, isn't it? I hate it when it does that. Just... Stand there and whoa! What, are you doing that for? what I'm not doing anything. What are you talking about? What am I doing? Every orc learns the heavy labor of mining. All spend years in the caves. Oh yeah. The mines are hard, but Malakath rewards those who rise to the challenge. Okay. I'm here to mine, Outland. All right. So unless you want to dig, get out. Watch your feet. Digging. Look at her face. Look how closely she watches me mine. I have metal to dig. <laughs> I have metal to dig. Do you? Because it doesn't Malachi look like it. Has given me the task to mine. Good ore brings strength to our people. I'm here to mine, Outlander. So unless you want to dig, get out. What do you think I'm doing, lady? And this is awesome. Look how much of this stuff is in here. I'm here to mine, Outlander. So unless you want to dig, get out. She's all bark and no bite. Man, there's tons of it in here. This is awesome. Can I look at my inventory while I'm swinging this thing? I can. We're up to 27. Ooh, we got a sapphire too. This stuff is going to start to add up here. Now we're up to uh, 30. Starting to starting to get heavy. And I don't even know how much of the mine we've seen so far. I guess, I guess we've seen most of it. Cool. Oh, oh, a big hole. Watch out. So this is that vein I was trying to mine before. Yeah, okay, it's gonna work this time. 
Annalise is just standing guard there. Oh! Be careful! <laughs> I fell right down the damn hole, man. <laughs> okay, this is... This is the way we came in. I didn't realize we'd gone up that high, but I guess we had, hadn't we? Bunch of big old boulders here. Every orc learns the heavy labor of mining. I'll spend years in the caves. Okay. <laughs> Fell right in that damn hole. So yeah, I mean, way earlier in the game, somebody suggested that perhaps I don't really need to carry a pickaxe, that I could usually find one in any mine. There's probably some truth to that. Gadba and me came to work the mine. The plan is to get rich and then go back to Lagerspur and take over. You just go around telling everybody your plans there, dude? Every orc learns the heavy labor of mining. I'll spend years in the caves. What are you mining? You got anything good over here? Every orc learns the heavy labor of mining. I already I'll mined that boar. The There's case. nothing left. Okay. Well, you know, we got a fair amount. I think there's another way to go over here. Let's go check it out real quick. Do more ebony. It's a good time to meditate. Meditate while we mine. She's the most exaggerated yawn. Alright, we'll get this and then we'll get the heck out of here. But yeah, I don't have any plans to sell it to this guy. I need the ebony or more than I need the gold. I don't need the gold. And I'm, I'm assuming I could just walk out of here with it. I don't think he'll stop me. Okay. Let's get the heck out of here. We've seen the mine. Chock full of stuff, man. Whoop, I found one more. <laughs> Just when you thought I was going to leave. <laughs> We're up to uh, 43. Holy cow. That is a lot of ebony ore. Okay. So, I mean, I, I guess we could go back to Windhelm. But uh, like I said, I, I don't have a permanent residence there. And I really am worried to just dump all of this hard-earned ore into a crate or box or whatever in Hiram and just leave it there. You know? Worry that somebody will take it or the game will just delete it. So I don't really know what to do with it. I hate to go all the way back to like Whiterun or something. We're up to winter hold. Winter winter hold? Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, there we go. Just walk on out of here. Nobody's gonna stop us. Okay, uh let's see here. Let me look at the map. Not this map, let's look at the big map. Well, this is the, exactly the direction I want to go in. I'm gonna head back over here to Windhelm. I um I don't know. Maybe since I left, maybe if I go back and talk to Yordleaf, there's a chance that um, they'll give me a place to live. I don't know. I'm thinking it's not going to happen. I like walking through here, though. All these snow-covered trees. I dig it. like a big trampoline over there. That's where we fought that dragon before. You gotta get around these rocks. Uh-oh. Eh, we'll be fine. 
Adelisa will find a way around. She'll be okay. Huh, there's a road here. She's still with me. Wow, I'm surprised. Alright, here we are. So, I'm going to go stick my head back in here. See what happens. I wonder if it's better to uh, turn all this ore into ingots. Or if it even matters. I don't think it matters at all. I mean, ebony ore weighs one each. I'm pretty sure ingots also weigh one each. See? So, the, it's no advantage that I can think of to turn it into an ingot until you're ready to work with it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess the advantage is that you don't always find smelters everywhere. So if you find a smelter, it's good to go ahead and smelt it. Like I said, it weighs the same. I, I, the, only, the only difference I could think of is that sometimes some metals use two ores. Um, and if you, like, for example, oh, does this guy have something to say to me? No. Um, if you use, like, all of your you know iron ore you and turn it into ingots, then you won't be able to make some other type of ore that I can't think of. Um, but I don't think that ebony ore is like that. My weight is going down. I don't know why it is. Are ebony ingots only weigh a half? Let's see. No, they weigh one. Maybe it takes two ebony ores to make one ebony ingot? Is that what's going on here and I'm not noticing it? Yes, requires two ebony. Okay, so this actually will um, lighten my load. Okay, same thing with gold. Okay, whatever. That's fine. No big deal. Well, I'm gonna go pay another quick visit to your leaf and. Uh, but otherwise, oh, good. They finally cleaned up the body. Okay. Safe, I hope. That actually is a good, good uh, sign. I think maybe that does mean that the game has progressed a little bit. And maybe they're going to offer me a place to live here. I don't know. It's nice to dream. Won't give us a they have the same conversation I every time I come in here. Oh. A true I swear He'll come around. Don't be so sure of that. We've What's up? Not much. If you have Damn it. Of the rest <sighs> of Take it to Ulfric immediately. That sucks, man. Travel safely. And we'll Speak with Garmar. He'll size you up and see where we can best use your talents. Oh well. If he's Knowledge not with us, open. he's against us. Well, I guess I'll never get a place to live here. I don't know. I think I'm gonna go online and see what it is I need to do in order to get that that place, make it mine. Uh, in the meantime, I am gonna walk over to it. Hands to yourself, sneak thief. And uh, just see if maybe it looks different. Maybe it's been cleaned up or something. I don't know. Maybe I need to talk to um. Gosh, who was it? Um, who, who? Somebody here in this place was the mother of the person who owned Hiram. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm saying the name of the place right. Um, who was it? And where is she now? I mean, she could be in Candlehearth, maybe. Hey. The best way for us to win the Nord's respect is through hard work. Yeah. Uh, is it you? No. A sailor on the North She's a Island. sailor. It's not her. It's good looking, Candle Hearth. Welcome. 
Let this me is know if you want anything. I think I've got a clean mug around here. The storm clothes. Somewhere. Can't just throw the big we drink to our youth. Yes. Oh, nothing here. Okay, well, either she's not the right person, or she's not who I'm supposed to talk to. drive out the empire from this land that we own. With our blood I still can't steel, believe Isabel is gone. Okay. She was such a helpful young lass. Well. Hmm. Um. I mean, sometimes I see people walking around out here. But I'm thinking that Viola was the one uh, that I talked to before during the first Blood on the Ice. Yeah, unfortunately. I don't see the name of that person that we talked to before. Oh, Helgard? Who's Helgard? Oh, Helgard is the woman uh, that uh, is in the Hall of the Dead, I believe. Spare a coin for a poor old woman. Um, hmm. Oh, well. I don't know, man. I don't know where this person will be. They could just be walking around town. For some reason, I feel like I often see her walking around this part of the city. It's good to spend some time on solid land. They say Alfred Stormcloak murdered the high. What's this place again? With his voice. Oh, the corner club. I don't think she's gonna be in here. But the gray quarter would be a haven for my Take a seat and get the cold out. I was wrong. Interesting place. The best way for us to win the Nord's respect mm -hmm. is through hard work. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'm a sailor on the North Wind. We're laying over in Windhelm for a while. Oh well. How many times have I said oh well? Come see me in the marketplace tomorrow. You won't find better prices in all of East March. I'd travel more, but who wants to deal with all the soldiers these days? Who wants to deal with all the soldiers these days? Those damned soldiers. Oh well. Let's go back in here to Candle Hearth Hall. It's cold. We'll go in here and we'll sit by the fire and we'll read a book. That's what we'll do. This is now our seat. Alright, let's look at our inventory here. We're going to look at our books. And let's see, we'll read Ancestors and the Dunmer. Yep, that's what it's called. Ancestors and the Dunmer. Ghosts walk among them. The departed spirits of the Dunmeri and perhaps those of all races, persist after death. The knowledge and power of departed ancestors benefits the bloodlines of Dunmary houses. The bond between the living family members and immortal ancestors is partly blood, partly ritual, partly volitional. A member brought into the house through marriage binds himself through ritual and oath into the clan and gains communication and benefits from the clan's ancestors. However, his access to the ancestors is less than his offspring, and he retains some access to the ancestors of his own bloodline. The Family Shrine Each residence has a family shrine. In poorer homes, it may be no more than a hearth or alcove where family relics are displayed in and venerated. In wealthy homes, a room is set aside for the use of the ancestors. This shrine is called the Waiting Door and represents the door to oblivion. Here the family members pay their respects to their ancestors through sacrifice and prayer, through oaths sworn upon duties, and through reports on the affairs of the family. In return, the family may receive information, training, and blessings from the family's ancestors. The ancestors are thus the protectors of the home, and especially the precincts of the waiting door. The Ghost Fence it is a family's most solemn duty to make sure their ancestors' remains are interred properly in a city of the dead such as Necrom. Here the spirits draw comfort from one another against the chill of the mortal world. 
However, as a sign of great honor and sacrifice, an ancestor may grant that part of his remains be retained to serve as part of a ghost fence, protecting the clan's shrine and family precincts. Such an arrangement is often part of the family member's will, that a knuckle bone shall be saved out of his remains and incorporated with solemn magic and ceremony into a clan ghost fence. In more exceptional cases, an entire skeleton or even a preserved corpse may be bound into a ghost fence. These remains become a beacon and focus for ancestral spirits and for the spirit of the remains in particular. The more remains used to make a ghost fence, the more powerful the fence is. And the most powerful mortals in life have the most powerful remains. The great ghost fence created by the tribunal to hold back the blight incorporates the bones of many heroes of the temple and of the houses Indoral and Rhetoran who dedicated their spirits to the temple and clan as their surrogate families. The ghost fence also contains bones taken from the catacombs of Necrom and the many battlefields of Morrowind. The Mortal Chill Spirits do not like to visit the mortal world, and they do so only out of duty and obligation. Spirits tell us that the other world is more pleasant, or at least more comfortable than, for spirits, than our real world, which is cold, bitter, and full of pain and loss. Mad Spirits Spirits that are forced to remain in our world against their will may become mad spirits or ghosts. Some spirits are bound to this world because of some terrible circumstances of their death, or because of some powerful emotional bond to a person, place, or thing. These are called hauntings. Some spirits are captured and bound to enchanted items by wizards. If the binding is involuntary, the spirit usually goes mad. A willing spirit may or may not retain its sanity, depending on the strength of the spirit and the wisdom of the enchanter. Some spirits are bound against their wills to protect family shrines. This unpleasant fate is reserved for those who have not served the family faithfully in life. Dutiful and honorable ancestral spirits often aid in the capture and binding of wayward spirits. These spirits usually go mad and make terrifying guardians. They are ritually prevented from harming mortals of their clans, but that does not necessarily discourage them from mischievous or peevish behavior. They are exceedingly dangerous for intruders. At the same time, if an intruder can penetrate the spirit's madness and play upon the spirit's resentment of his own clan, the angry spirits may be manipulated. Oblivion The existence of oblivion is acknowledged by all Tamriel cultures, but there is little agreement on the nature of that other world, other than it is the place where the Adra and Daedra live, and that communication and travel are possible between this world and oblivion through magic and ritual. The Dunmer do not emphasize the distinction between this world and oblivion as do the human cultures of Tamriel. They regard our world and the other world as a whole with many paths from one end to the other rather than two separate worlds of different natures with distinct borders. This philosophical viewpoint may account for the greater affinity of elves for magic and its practices. Foreign Views of Dunmary Ancestor Worship and Spirit Magic The Altmary and Bosmary cultures also venerate their ancestors but only by respecting the orderly and blissful passage of these spirits from this world to the next. That is, wood elves and high elves believe it is cruel and unnatural to encourage the spirits of the dead to linger in our world. Even more grotesque and repugnant is the display of the bodily remains of ancestors in ghost fences and ash pits. The presentation of finger bones in a family shrine, for example, is sacrilegious to the Bosmer, who eat their dead, and barbaric to the Altmer, who inter their dead. The human cultures of Tamriel are ignorant and fearful of dark elves in their culture, considering them to be inhuman and evil, like orcs and Argonians, but more sophisticated. The human populations of Tamriel associate Dunmary ancestor worship and spirit magic with necromancy. In fact, this association of the dark elves with necromancy is at least partly responsible for the dark reputation of the Dunmer throughout Tamriel. This is generally an ignorant misconception, for necromancy outside the acceptable clan rituals is a most abhorrent abomination in the eyes of the Dunmer. The Dark Elves would never think of practicing sorcerous necromancy upon any Dark Elf or upon the remains of any Elf. However, Dark Elves consider the human and orcish races to be little more than animals. 
There is no injunction against necromancy upon such remains, or on the remains of any animal, bird, or insect. Imperial policy officially recognizes the practices of Dunmary ancestor, ancestor veneration and spirit magic as a religion, and protects their freedom to pursue such practices so long as they do not threaten the security of the empire. Privately, most imperial officials and traders believe dark elf ancestor worship and displays of remains are barbaric or even necromantic. Telvanni Necromancy The Telvanni are adept masters of necromancy. They do not, however, practice necromancy upon the remains of dark elves. Some Telvanni regard such practices with loathing and righteous anger. They do practice necromancy upon the remains of animals and upon the remains of humans, orcs, and argonians, who are technically no more than animals in Morrowind. Publisher's Note This book was written by an unknown scholar as a guide for foreign visitors to Morrowind shortly after the armistice, armistice was signed. Many of these practices have since fallen into disfavor. The most obvious changes are those regarding the practice of necromancy and the great ghost fence. Dunmer today regard necromancy upon any of the accepted races and an as an abomination. The ghost fence has forced many changes in the practice of ancestor worship. With the vast majority of ancestors' remains going to strengthen the great ghost fence around the mountain of Dagoth Ur, there are very few clan ghost fences in Morrowind. The temple discourages such practices among the houses as selfish. The upkeep of family tombs and private waiting doors has also fallen into disfavor, as very few remains have been buried in these tombs and shrines since the armistice. In recent years, most Dunmer venerate a small portion of their ancestors' remains kept at a local temple. Well, there you go. Way more than you ever wanted to know about ancestors and the Dunmer. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this episode. I sure hope you join me again in the next one.